Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Books and the World, a presentation of the Cape Cod Rogers Center. And if you ask, what is the story about today? We've got a lot of stories. A book called I Am of Cape Cod by our guests, John Whalen and Kim Rodriguez. We've got at least 139 stories in a book called I Am of Cape Cod. John Whalen and Kim Rodriguez, you are both of Cape Cod. Yes. And that brings us right back to the title and saying hello to you. What's the book about? The book is really, Bob, the book is really about the people of Cape Cod. We picked, we were very fortunate, we picked people from all 15 towns on Cape Cod. Uh, we have representatives from each of the towns and we tried to make them representative of uh, different walks of life so we would show the depth and breadth of life on Cape Cod. How did the book come about in the first place, John? I had been traveling in, in, in Ireland and I saw a book called I Am of Kerry uh -huh. about the county Kerry, which was um, a county in the west of Ireland that always stressed independence and, and uh, really uh, has wonderful scenery, scenery like we found on Cape Cod. So um, the, the author there had interviewed a hundred people and asked them to submit a passage about their life in Kerry. And I had the idea that maybe we could do a book like that about Cape Cod. So what I did is when I got back uh, here to Chatham, I called her and I had a little trouble finding her, of course. I found her finally in Dublin and her name was Valerie O'Sullivan and I said, could we do the book? She said, certainly, you can copyright your title, but you cannot protect the concept. In other words, you could protect I am of Cape Cod, but someone else could duplicate or replicate your concept starting the first day they saw it. So that's a, just a <laughs> fact of life that Kim and I are living with, it's fine. But um, so we came back and I thought, well, so I started to make a list of people for towns and I thought, I'm gonna need a great photographer. I'm gonna need someone who was terrific. So I had bought Dogs of Cape Cod. It was a book that Kim had done earlier, um, perhaps the year before. And Dogs on Cape Cod is just beautiful. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Kim's photography is terrific. The dogs all have personality. Couldn't get over the personality <laughs> that was just exuding from these dogs. So I thought, that's the photographer I want. Uh huh. All right, now how did you go about getting all the people whose stories are in your book? Well, the initial list was, was, um, was it was a, uh, a process. In other words, uh, we live in Chatham. It was pretty easy for us to think of 10 or 12 or 15 people from Chatham and perhaps from Harwich and, and perhaps from Hyannis and Provincetown, Orleans. But some of the towns were more difficult because um, I didn't know a single person in the town of Bourne. Uh -huh. I, I, I knew very few people in, in Sandwich. So between Kim and myself and asking other people, we compiled a list and we probably signed contracts because we had a legal contract. You can't run someone's written piece or someone's uh, photograph without their permission. Uh -huh. So I had a lawyer create a contract which the people signed. It, they, each person agreed to submit a passage within a certain amount of time. Well, I want to backtrack a little bit, John. Did you go to people, in cases, many cases, total strangers? Absolutely and say, hello, my name is John, I want you to write about what you love about Cape Cod. I say that I was empowered to call anybody. For example, if I wanted to call, and I'm gonna draw an example of somebody I didn't know but I knew of, Jung Ho Park. I wanted Jung Ho Park very badly to be in the book. So I called him, yeah. and I had an appointment, went in to see him, and I didn't know, never seen him before in my life in person, and I explained what I was doing, and what I wanted to do, he said, absolutely, we'll do the book. I would think if I got a call from someone saying, hello, I want you to, and I would say, wait a minute, what are you selling? Right, right, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> Kim and I have, uh, both of us have been asked, how much does it cost to be in your book? Right, right, yes, absolutely. Yeah. And people think, you know, you're uh, on one of those dateline things, like you're some strange person if you inquire about them being in your book. Yeah, yeah, and you so. came as a photographer saying, you want to take my 
picture? Right. Wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. people are not always so warm, but I think once they they understand the concept then and what you want to do and you tell, pe tell them uh, other people who are in the book, then they're, uh, you know, not so hesitant. Uh-huh, all right. Yeah. No, I'm then they embrace the idea, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say to you, as a total stranger, hi there, uh, what do you like about Cape Cod? We want to put it in the book. What did you write personally, John? Well, what did you write about? I, I, the thing I wrote was the forward, and I talked about how wonderfully blessed I have been to live on Cape Cod for so long, and how traditionally I have, um, I've loved living here, but I really didn't ever like the climate. I'm a, I'm a person who loves warm weather, really warm weather, mm -hmm. and, and if, if, if it had been simply uh, the choice of weather, I never would have lived on Cape Cod. I would have lived somewhere <laughs> else. But I found, I have found through the years that the people of Cape Cod are so warm and so exciting to know that I think the people are the best feature of Cape Cod. All right. Now, you were, were you born on Cape Cod? No. I, I came down at four days old. Oh, well, that's pretty uh, but good. I but I didn't always live here. My, my mother grew up here. Oh. My mother grew up on Cape Cod. My grandparents and, lived here. And, and Kim, are you um, of Cape Cod? Uh, not exactly. My dad was born and raised in Chatham, actually, and he went into the Navy. And so I grew up in Virginia um, oh. and moved here when I started high school. So I've been, um, I will be 55 pretty soon. And so since <laughs> the age of 11, 12, um, I've, I've been here, but I, I love it. And I have a love affair with it. When I go to Orleans, for instance, I enjoy, I, I go by Pleasant Bay because I just, I want to um, grab the whole essence of the Cape. It never gets old after all these years. And every time I go over the bridge and I'm a major traveler, when I hit the Sagamore Bridge, I'm so happy to be back home. There's it's something a, about yeah, traversing it, that bridge that really you, it does. It hits home. You're just there's just nothing like it. And the isolation, you know, when people will say, "Oh, there's a lot of traffic." Well, okay, it took eight minutes longer, but there's really <laughs> never a lot of traffic on the Cape. So I, I love that. Yeah, I get the yeah. same feeling if I'm off Cape. Yep. And. Get 495 or 195, and then you narrow down, and then you get on six. Right, that's and right. And you say, that's an I'm, home. I'm home. <laughs> I'm home, absolutely. I know. feel and, that way. And it was interesting what I was going to say too with the doing this book, uh, it, living vicariously through all of these 139 people, um, seeing what they do, and not only what they do, and getting an, even if even you know it might have been. 10 minutes, it might have been an hour that we spent with them, it might have been more, but not only knowing and seeing what they did, but the environment that they live in. And having been here for many, many years, 40, 45 years, um, it's seeing different parts of the Cape that I never knew existed. Uh -huh. And every, you know, people assuming, well, the Cape is a small place. It really is not that small. And seeing the, you know, the nuances of the parts of Cape Cod that, Nobody know, and and myself, I could never find those places again. I could never find. <laughs> granted, I have a bad sense of direction, terrible, but it, not not being able to find those tiny little roads that all of a sudden make some one of these people's homes so wonderful and and um, impactful. Now, John and Kim, uh, there's an introduction to your book by Anna Leclaire. Yes. And it, it talks about geographically how the sandbar, if you use the word sandbar, that we're on on Cape Cod came about historically uh, through the ages. Right, right. And yet when you're on Cape Cod, sometimes when I'm just traveling from, I live in Centerville, yeah, yeah. and I'll go over to Mashpee or down toward Falmouth, mm -hmm. And I figure, wait a minute, on the map, Cape Cod is this wide, and then it curves up. Right. Where is all the space coming from? And it, wow. the land gets bigger as you traverse it. Mm -hmm. Well, Bob, one of the things I, I love, I, um, I, um, I, I, I love the idea. I do a, um, I do a radio program down in, in Provincetown uh -huh. every other week. And, and as I drive to Provincetown, as I pass High Head, which is in Truro, that's the end of the glacial moraine. 
In other words, the glacial moraine is, the, is, the, um, is actually the dirt and, and rocks that make up Cape Cod. But beyond that, the entire piece that is Provincetown is accreted sand. There's, not, there's no real solid land there. It's just sand. It's a moving piece. It's just, it excites me every time. I, I, we, we, we both love Cape Cod. Yes. So that's part of why we did it. And, and the other thing is that we empowered the people in addition. We let them say what they wanted to say without really editing it. And we let them choose where they were going to be photographed. What was your instruction to the little boat? It was, it was uh, I want you to submit a passage fairly short about your life on Cape Cod or something that's truly meaningful to you. That's what I asked for. And we said, you will be given the privilege of choosing how you're going to be photographed and where you're going to be photographed. So Kim and I went to wherever they asked us to go to and took their photograph. Ooh. And it was terrific. Yeah. It was absolutely uh -huh. terrific. All right, I'm going to open the book and we're going to take some pictures oh boy. of your photographs. Okay. Because at the very beginning, there are some glorious pictures, Kim. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm turning the pages here, but they're, they're just lovely. And thank you. Thank you. It was so much fun. And just, you know, we tried to show the, um, the uh, versatility of the Cape, too, in terms of landscape. Look at that. It's just, it's just beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. And then we turn to the pictures of the people themselves. And this is the yes. format of the book. Yes. Uh, you have a story, you have a picture, mm -hmm. uh, talking to the people to take their picture. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine you would ask them, what, what is your favorite or? I would basically try to find something, some sort of commonality, um, whether it be a car that they had, like, and somebody I knew that owned a car just like that, that was a special antique car, or um, flowers, or some, some sort of commonality. And, uh, but of course, the most important thing to find was if they had a dog, because I am dog obsessed. I noticed so, there were dogs in some yeah, a lot of dogs. Any time, anytime there was a dog at the door, John would say, oh no. <laughs> I just, I light up when I see a dog. And the truth of the matter is that whether it's a dog or a cat, but of course the cats would never come out, um, the dogs always calmed the people. So then they were more, it was easier to photograph them. They were much more relaxed. And because it's stressful meeting somebody, hi, my name is Kim Rodriguez, I'm gonna take your photo. So if they had a dog, all of a sudden their blood pressure would go down. It was great. And of course, I love the dogs and they would love that I love the dogs. So the, the they, dog was almost a instant therapy dog. Oh, it was instant. <laughs> for me first and then for them. For both. So, Oh. And then, and John would say, "Oh no, because no, knew. I love dogs. I, he I loves don't. dogs. He but, has an adorable dog." But I would have yeah. a, I would yeah. have a time schedule. Right. For right. example, we're supposed to take subject A's picture at eight and subject yeah. P at eight thirty. Well, if a dog was introduced in the first one, we weren't going to make we this. Were up. Go, we were not we going to be not on time. Make that. No. <laughs> the <laughs> other thing, I, 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 I've watched Kim um, have people who were somewhat tense people who wanted to give a certain image in their photograph um, that they wanted to portray. And Kim got them to relax so you saw the real person. It really is a skill that she has. She's fantastic with dogs, but she's terrific with people. And um, each time we, we did it, I, I just was amazed by the process. Just terrific process. Well, you're so, I, I feel so passionate about where I live. So uh, for instance, um, one lady um, in Wellfleet, to be in this area with the fog, which, and there's actually a color photo as well, with the fog rising, the boats there, her studio was so mm. stunning that you couldn't help but not be enthusiastic about where she was. So I would, I, I think my, I think the people that I photographed, they knew I was passionate about what they do, trying to capture their personality, and you know they would say, "Well, make it good." Well, it's a reflection of me, so oh. I'm going to make it good. It's, it wasn't. I did not take anything cavalierly. I was. I was very serious about what I did. Uh -huh. So, you know. speaking to all these people and in the different walks of life, John and Kim, uh, did you find new things about Cape Cod? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, w the intent initially, when we drew up the list, um, was to have well-known people who 
many of us would know, and unknown people. Well, how do you get a hold of no unknown people? Well, you kind of in a town. You, I would, if I went to your town and I said, Bob, I need, to, I need some ideas about someone who might be good for a book, and you might suggest four or five names, and some of them would be the best known people in the town, and some would be just people who are solid citizens who live there who aren't particularly well known. Well, what we learned is that the ordinary people are in fact also extraordinary. They have oh. wonderful stories. They did something that was significant, and we benefited from it. Absolutely. Is there any particular thread or a main thread about how people got here? And <laughs> we didn't pursue it. We, we did not pursue that. It would have been a theme. It, it was a possible theme, but we didn't happen to have yeah, that. Yeah, because in the stories that people have uh, put into a fairly short summary, you know, you get somebody's life in uh, several paragraphs, yes, yes. Uh, I would think that, well, they all say, well, I came to Cape Cod, or I was born on Cape Cod, mm -hmm. and the, the thread that well, is popular. I think a lot of them, I think John will agree that a, a lot of the people felt that they came here without planning on staying. It was a transient job or some, something, and then all of a sudden they just fell in love and had to stay here, even though they were going to make less money, whatever the case may be, but they had they felt this connection to the Cape because of the people. Uh -huh. and, what and is it, your own story of Cape Cod? My grandfather came uh, in 1912. He was hired to put the plumbing in the Chatham Bars Inn. <laughs> so he came down as a, a workman uh -huh. in, for, with a company. He was a, part, a partner in this company that, that uh, put the, installed the plumbing in the original building of the Chatham Bars Inn. And uh, the moment, and Chatham was a desolate place. Mm. There was nothing going on. This is really before cars. This is, this is in the horse and wagon days. And um, the train was there, but the train was very primitive, and, um, and the place was primitive. There wasn't much going on. And so his partner, the moment they finished and got paid, his partner said, I am out of here. I'm leaving Cape Cod. I'm going back to Boston, where life exists. <laughs> so my grandfather stayed, and we stayed, and we've been here since. We, we're, been here ever since. <laughs> we're hanging out. We're still here. And we love it here. Um, the other thing I wanted to say about Kim that is wonderful is that Digital photography has changed the so world much. of photography. The idea that a person took a photo, and maybe they took six shots in the olden days. Mm -hmm. Well, Kim's camera is such that she goes click, 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 and she literally, in a shoot, would take 50, 100, or more mm -hmm. shots more. of yeah. a person. Especially if there was a dog. And no. particularly <laughs> if there was a dog. Right. So then the process, and I want to talk about her effort, her effort was tremendous because in picking the photos that are in the book, she had to go through 50 or 100 shots of each of the 139 people and pick one that was outstanding. Yeah, and you have a memory stick with 400 exposures on it. Right, 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 for one day, right, yeah, because we would do two, three, four people at one day. But that's, on that's day. the way we did it, yeah. and, um, and so I feel, I feel, as a person who had the, the, the idea of the concept, very blessed to have had Kim work so diligently on first photographing him and then picking the right photo. Right. Did you start with a brownie camera? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I have many, many storage. Uh, I, I, you know, the, the uh, little passport file, the, um, the flash drives, the memory card themselves. I'm, I was so, you know, it was such a worst nightmare as what if something happened to um, uh -huh. an event or taking well, photos. Here, I'm going to. I'm going to take a picture of this particular page yes, here. Yes, the famous because, Terry Duenas. Yes. Yeah, because this is Terry, yeah. and Terry is a part of the Cape Cod Community Television System. Yes, yes. And the picture yep. is a picture of the very studio we're sitting in. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah, so Wonderful. we've gone full cycle. Yes, here. We exactly. have gone full cycle. <laughs> I love it. Terry was great, too. So, so Bob, what, what, one of the things that we think is um, that enhanced the book, we think, we had the raw material. Um, I compiled all of the passages that the people sent in, and Kim compiled all of the photos. 
But really, the book that we have is, we think, special because of the skill and the effort of our editor. We, we, um, Who is your editor, Joe? Her, her name is Connie Sullivan, and, and she is a professional editor with Hummingbird Press, Hum Hummingbird's Books. books yeah. And she had done Kim's book, the prior book. She did The Dogs on Cape Cod. She is a consummate professional, mm -hmm. and so she really, if anything, uplifted our book and made it a better book. What did she do physically to create or help create this book, John? She would. She chose the uh, okay. paper. She chose the graphic art. She chose um, the font. Um, this, most importantly, the sequence of the photos. What made more sense? Going, you know, literally page to page, doing the color front matter. It's so. I mean, she worked 24/7 as we did um, on the book. So it's a very intense job. And I would, I, I would try to uh, intervene a little bit. Like, for instance, there was a, a lady who had um, a puppy. So I had taken pictures without the puppy. And then when I found out she had a puppy, I said, go get the puppy. <laughs> so I took all these pictures, and I showed Connie my favorites. And I said, are you kidding me? You're going to pick the one, because she chose everything. You're going to pick the one without the puppy? And she said, th took off her glasses, this is not a dog book. This so, is a people book. Uh, this, oh. It's about people, ooh, so ooh, exactly. Right to my right heart. I know, heart. I know. Yeah. That's right. So but, anyway, but she was she is a very intense woman. She has done the most beautiful art books uh, around the world, literally. Um, so we were privileged to have her create this for us. And so 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 we've seen a lot of and this is not to demean local publications, but some local publications, if they had just taken our raw material, we would not have ended up with this book. We ended up with a better book because of a professional with skill and ability and interest. Yeah, right, right. And you accepted what the editor just said. It wasn't a yes. mess. Yes. In I, our I, case, I, she's the professional. Yeah. We're the relative amateurs. That's yeah. Right. We have talked to many authors in the course of this program, Books in the World. Right, right. And uh, some of the authors have expressed first terrible feelings of hurt. When an editor says, wait a minute, you've got a sequence here that doesn't play right. Yes. And, the, and the first feeling you get as the author is, how dare you touch my work right, that's and suggest so My masterpiece. Yes, that's yeah. right. How could you alter my masterpiece? That's right. I cried. I have cried a few tears between this one and the <laughs> dog's book. But, but I am strong because I know she knows exactly what she's talking about. And she's always right in the end. So I think people have to trust their editor if they believe in them and know that this is their forte you know taking pictures is what I do but creating the end result is what she does mm -hmm. we're talking to the authors of the, uh, the new author and the photographer who put this book together our book today is called I am of Cape Cod I think back to New York State for just a moment because they were very successful with the song that uh, the Chamber of Commerce from the state of New York played all over the country. I love New York. Yes. Oh, it was a yes. terrific yes. campaign, wonderful yes. campaign. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's not I love Cape Cod, but I am of Cape Cod. Mm -hmm. And that of in there well, we feel a we, whole we feel we wide belong. acceptance. Yes, yes, that's true, that's true. That's true. Um, we feel we belong, and we feel that the people we interviewed, and we interview, I actually interviewed 200 people, and uh, uh, just a, uh, and you picked um, what I considered the most interesting and interest, interested people too, people who wanted to do it, who thought it was a good project. It would be much more exciting if you had people who cared than if you had people who didn't care at all. So we worked with the people who cared. And it, it just worked very, very well for us. You commented earlier before we went in the air, you commented about how heavy the book was. Yes, physically it's, it's a sturdy book. Mm -hmm. it, it is three pounds. And um, the reason it's three pounds is that the paper on which the photographs and the, and the text are printed is, is a high quality art paper. And uh, it makes the book a heavier book. What does that do for the quality of the photographs? I imagine it enhances it. Enhances. It, it does. It definitely, just the way that they're printed, um, the, it, you get all the qualities, all the, um, um, the 
again, kind of nuances of the colors uh, that are going through. Somet sometimes with books, you know, they'll really just have three or four colors, but they, this is different because we have all the variety of dyes and colors and all Yeah, that turning of the pages of the yeah. book as I read through it, yeah. I would go say, wait a minute, if I got two pages here and right. it's a single page because it's a sturdy piece right. of paper. It, right, it's a, it's a heavy weight, heavy pound page, heavy pound yeah. uh, paper. Gee, well, all right, now, sitting here listening to all these stories about people who came to Cape Cod, 50 years ago, we pushed our <laughs> little baby <laughs> in a stroller for our first visit to Cape Cod. Oh, wow. And then sure enough, years later, here we are living here. Yes. We hear that a lot. Yep. We, we've heard that a great deal. Yep. Uh, people didn't plan to, but they're here. That's right. Huh? Very special Is there place. going to be a second book, or do you have more people to interview? Or That's to an photograph? ongoing discussion. Yep. Um, we, we now know that we left out as many wonderful, many, many, probably multiple times, as many interesting and wonderful people as we had in it. And there are people who naturally look like we should have had them. Uh, we should have had them. Well, but we could do it. We could do another one. But we haven't decided yet. Really, it's a. Um, it was an enjoyable process, mm -hmm. but it was a bit of work. Uh -huh. Well, we'll let you rest before the next set. Good. Next good. Well, chapter that's what we're doing. Good. Up. That sounds great. The sequence that's number two. Good. And I want to thank you, John and Kim, for thank being our all. guests today and bringing in this very interesting book. Thank you. It brings you back to saying. I'm glad I'm here all over again. Absolutely. That's right. I hope the so. book is called I Am of Cape Cod by John Whalen and Kim Rodriguez, our guests today on Books in the World. And we thank you very much for looking in because without you, we would just have a very interesting conversation among ourselves. Thanks for viewing today's episode of Books in the World. Mm -hmm.